Good morning and welcome. I'm Angela Davis and I'm the 4 a.m. quilter. And it is 4.30 in the morning. I've been up since four. So I thought I'd make myself a cup of uh, uh, honey water with a little bit of uh, lemon. No, apple cider vinegar. So we'll see what this tastes like. Hmm, surprisingly not bad. Do you like my teacup? Turn this off. Is that better? It's pretty. Found that a few months ago. I think I was at I think I was at Salvation Army. Just loved it. I, um, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm not very good at keeping myself hydrated. Hence the, uh, honey water with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It's surprisingly not bad. It's a teaspoon of honey, literally just a few drops of apple cider vinegar and then hot water from the tea kettle. So I'm gonna drink that down and uh, you know, have my coffee while I'm at work instead of having coffee here and then more coffee at work. Oh, <laughs> what's funny is I never used to be a coffee drinker. I was always a hot tea drinker. And when my ex-husband and I were starting our family, we were older parents. And so there we were, you know, starting our family. We had two toddlers and I was pregnant with our third. We had three children in three and a half years. And I stayed home mom at the time. And in order to get through the morning, before their nap time because I had them on the same nap schedule so that I could nap when they napped while I was pregnant with with our youngest. In order to get through the morning, I started drinking just a half a cup of coffee just to keep me alert. And I remember going in to see my doctor for my monthly visit and I was all panicky. You know, what am I going to do? I started drinking coffee and the doctor looked at me and she says, Angela, I'm not worried about that half a cup of coffee in the morning that you're drinking. I'm worried about my patients who are still drinking 20 cups of coffee a day. <laughs> I've been drinking coffee ever since, <laughs> but I still love my tea. Um, but that's how I started drinking coffee. I was 41 and pregnant with our third child. <laughs> so I haven't posted a video this week. We had our daughter's graduation party. It went off without hitch. It was beautiful. She had a wonderful time. Food was all good. Too much food, you know, uh, but it was all good. Um, stuffed cabbage went over famously. And since then, I've been just playing catch up um, around the house. So what I want to do is I want to get you caught up on the tulip pattern quilt and I want to get you caught up on the quilt tops for my great nephews and my great niece. I want to get you caught up on the rail fence quilt. Um, but this today is Friday, June 15th, I think. But uh, myself, my daughter, my mom are going to Columbus, Ohio because we have another family graduation party to go to. So fortunately I'm off Monday, which is Juneteenth day. I don't know if other, well, I doubt, you know, other countries celebrate it, but here in the U S it's a new federal holiday. So consequently I'm off Monday. So I have a three day weekend. So I will be home on Monday and I plan on 
doing a video, another video on Monday um, to show you where I'm at with everything. And I have a couple ideas, but let me get headway with those other projects. I have a lot to, to accomplish. So this morning I'm just having my honey water with apple cider vinegar. Oh, uh, news. YouTube lowered their average membership subscriber level in order to monetize. And they lowered their number of hours in order to monetize. So when that happens, I will have more things available to you as far as connecting with you. I am working on drafting a pattern for the tulip pattern for subscribers who have commented about, you know, me sharing the pattern. And I'm gonna do that two ways. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a free pattern where I give you all of the templates for the tulip pattern the stem and the leaf, and that will be a free template. And then I'm going to have another version of the pattern where I give you the entire pattern, yardage measurements, requirements, um, instructions on layout and sewing. Uh, that one will be available for sale. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, getting that all together, um, and trying to figure out how I can make that accessible to you, whether it's through an e-commerce website that I link with my YouTube channel or my own website. So I'll keep you posted on that. So bear, hang on with me. And then also um, my giveaway for the two double nine patch quilts. I wanna get those underway and I wanna get those two quilts sandwiched and decide how I want to quilt them and finish them for you to make those available for the giveaway. So how are you all doing? I've been getting some great responses in my comments. A lot of people really liked the rail fence pattern, the unusual colors, the unusual patterns, uh, because rail fence tends to be a very traditional a beginner pattern we tend to think of it I think in a very traditional way light medium dark and I wanted to show you how to mix up those colors and patterns to maybe give it a little more of a modern twist and I got a lot of wonderful responses thank you so much I'm trying very hard to respond to all of your comments and I appreciate them very much the other comment I got was how I cut my beginning strip. I tend to overcut and well, I'd have to show you what I mean. But it, it was about just looking at it in a different way to start that first cut. So thank you for that comment. I have to try your idea. Basically, when you have your strips, you have to line up that first edge. So a lot of people just line it up with their lines on their mat and their ruler and they cut off that little bit of edge to start the first cut. I tend to, let's say my I'm cutting my strip at, my strip for this was eight inches. So I cut my strip at about nine and a half and then I turn it and then I measure the other side at eight inches and then I cut off that excess. That's how I do it. But her idea was instead of that, that extra time to do that, lay your strip set out with, the, with one line on your cutting mat and then take your ruler and cut off just that sliver where the uneven edge is and then start your first cut. And that would save me time. So I need to try that. Okay, I'm back. Something happened with my phone earlier and I wasn't able to capture that last part of footage. The other reason why I wanted to talk with you this morning is to show you this quilt. This is another vintage quilt of mine. 
and it's my last one. This is an eight pointed star, also called a Lemoyne star. You can see it better here. It's one diamond connected with set in corners and uh, the half square triangle. It's connected with a block with this large strip here and here. And traditionally, when you have large strips on a block like that, they used to use them as signature quilts to sign and then give it to someone, but it's also just a design element. I have to look up and research what's the name of that particular block. But I wanted to share it with you today. The maker did a beautiful edge. She put squares on point to do that edge. The quilting is not fine hand quilting. It's really utilitarian quilting. All she did was outline these spaces here. She didn't do any quilting in the stars. She did, I think, just straight quilting down the blocks and that was it. She outlined quilted each each border and that was it. It's not fine hand quilting. It's not, you know, 10 to 12 stitches per inch. It looks more like six stitches per inch, if that. Just utilitarian quilting. It covers the top part of my full size bed and drapes down a little bit. But I have to look up and find out what the name of this block is. This is an eight pointed star, also called a Lemoyne star. to share that with you. Let me pan over. It's in pretty good shape. There's only a couple seams that I need to stitch and mend. There's some fraying along the edge. But in general, it's intact. There are some stains. I'm not sure how I'm going to get those stains out, to be very honest with you. But I know there are several products on the market for quilters to get stains out. I have to research them. But I wanted to share that with you. The back is just the standard muslin. You can see better how she just did very basic stitching. There's a star, and in the middle of the star you can see she did no quilting. She only did those outside edges. And in this pieced block, she only did, you know, down those long edges. Utilitarian quilting. She did echo stitching along the outside strips. And that's it. The binding is the front folded toward the back and then stitched. I think that's how she did it. Very utilitarian. Sometimes I wish these quilts could talk and then you could find out, you know, what the quilt was for. Does she enjoy the quilting process or the piecing process? Does she just need to get done in a hurry? You know, what's her thought process? All right. Let me pan back. There it is. This is my last vintage quilt that I own that I wanted to share with you. I enjoyed talking with you this morning. You have a great weekend, and I'm going to catch up with you on Monday when I post another full video. I'm Angela Davis, and I'm the 4AM Quilter. Have a great day. You know what to do.